Hello, I'm Archie Luxury, and welcome to the program Fuckaroonies. Hello, Fuckaroonies, and today I'd like to talk about mid-range luxury. That's right, mid-range luxury. And uh, mid-range luxury has traditionally been dog shit territory for me. You know, brands like Tag Heuer, so many mediocre, Borman Mercer, Ebel, mid-range, terminal territory. However, fuckers, however, I've recently, I've recently um, got my ass kicked with Horde Horology. That's right, fuckers. I've had a few Horde Horology dogs, which are costing an absolute mozza to uh, service and repair. My Brege, my AP, case in point, fuckers. And uh, I got to tell you, I got respect for a Valjou or an ETA movement all of a sudden. And uh, it's quite interesting. I got an email from a guy and he was saying, oh, he's heard rumors that Swatch is uh, limiting, limiting release of their parts. What's going to happen for repair? And I said, hey, hang on, back the fucking truck up. Swats Group has released so much parts out there, you'll always get your fucker fixed. Whereas something like a uh, AP, where they only, at some stage, they were only churning out 10,000 watches a year, it's pretty hard to get the parts. So my advice is, anything ETA should be relatively easy to get serviced in the future. I don't see any huge problems there. Now, mid-range luxury. Why mid-range? Well, when you don't want to wear top-end, there's always mid-range. And one of my favourite mid-range brands is Tudor. Tudor. That's right, Tudor. And uh, i got to say, I'm really, really attached to Tudors. I think Tudor is the perfect balance of luxury and economy. And let's be honest there, I'd much rather have a Tudor than a Tag Heuer. Another mid-range brand who's pretending to be a lot more mightier than they really are is Omega. And Omega Seamaster, Aquaterra, they got the Speedmaster, such classics like the Flightmaster. Well, I gotta say, Omega's really, for a lot of their watches, they're, they're not upper luxury, they're mid luxury. Now, Omega is trying to hit, punch way above its, its weight. They're really trying to punch way above their weight. But uh, the reality is, fuckers, they're not fooling old Archie. And I think Omega is a great mid-range luxury watch. Great midi, great mid-lux. And uh, that's, that's, that's my view there, great midi. So there you go, fuckers. Mid-tier, mid-tier luxury. For when you want to wear a mid mid range luxury watch, and uh, gotta be careful there. Gotta be careful. You must. The rules are: if you are going to wear a Tudor, you gotta have two times as many Rolexes to show that you're a hipster and you're not doing it for economical reasons. See, it's okay to wear a Tudor if you got two two Rolex watches, but it's wrong to wear a Tudor if it's your only watch. That's the rules for mid-tier. So, uh, in the Tudor's case, it's so hip. Rolex could never be that hip. And uh, Tudor's, Tudor's, Tudor's are just so cool. So, uh, yeah, there you go, fuckers. Mid-tier watches. Tudor, Omega, acceptable. Stay away from tags. Stay away from uh, Borman Mercia. Ebel, so much mid-tier shit out there, it's not funny. But that's the guide, fuckers. Mid-tier, when only the mid will do. See you later, fuckers. Archie Luxury, reporting for you fuckers.
Forever. <laughs> 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 <laughs>